Hey guys, it's Sandro here. In today's video is on detailing this classic and extremely rare 944 Porsche Carrera GT. And as I start giving the wheels a clean, I'll just fill you guys in on this job. Firstly, this amazing car belongs to a repeat customer of mine who's a huge 80s Porsche fan and a car purist who loves his original factory OEM cars. And the first time we met, he was actually really hesitant, not only about ceramic coating his classic 911, but also about correcting the paint, as he had concerns about whether the car would still look factory or not, or if the process would change that. Needless to say, he was over the moon with the finished results I was able to achieve on that first car of his, which also put him at ease, as according to him, the car looked like it just rolled off the production line at Porsche 40 years ago. In addition, he also loved the way the coating made maintaining his car so easy and just kept it looking clean all the time. So this time around, he basically came in and said that he hates looking at this car when it's parked next to the other Porsche that I detailed. So he wants this one to look just as good. And he also specifically wants it ceramic coating, which couldn't have been a more different conversation I had with him compared to the first time he came in. Another thing to mention is that this client is very clear about what he wants, which is solely paint correction and a coating, and he's not interested in anything else, such as cleaning, correcting, or coating any of the other areas, such as the rims, glass, interior, door jams, or engine bay. Though as with all my jobs, I'll always see how I'm going with time, and try to do a little more if time allows. Beyond that, preserving as much of the original paint is also a goal of his and something that I'm going to try and do my absolute best to be respectful towards. Now once we have a better look at the paint with some proper lighting after it's been completely decontaminated, you'll see that it does need quite a bit of work to get it looking its best. But from a wash and decontamination perspective, you'll also notice that this car is really clean and well maintained. And although I do mention to all my clients that there's no need to wash their cars before they bring it in, this one was clearly recently washed. So my job here is really going to be focused on removing any existing waxes or sealants, as well as any light contamination or environmental fallout that may be on the surface. As regardless of whether it's clean or not, it's extremely vital that any car is properly decontaminated before the paint correction process. So I'll just try and catch up to the footage in which you guys can see me giving the wheel wells, tyres and rims a clean. I tend to use a degreaser or all-purpose cleaner for the tyres and wheel wells, as it works far better on those areas to break down and strip that grime, while a dedicated wheel cleaner works far better for the actual rims overall. And you'll see that I always pressure rinse the rims and then reapply my wheel cleaner before using various brushes and a wash mitt to clean them. The reason for this is that it's really important to remove as much of the grime as possible in a touchless manner before you start physically cleaning them or you will grind all that dirt over the rims leading to swirls, scratches and destroying their finish over time. And on what looks to be original paint on these almost 40 year old rims, the last thing I want to do is scratch them up any further. And although the client isn't interested in polishing or coating the rims, I'm still always going to give them a good clean regardless. The next step was giving the entire vehicle a pre-soak foam. For this I'm using a decontamination car wash detergent, which is also the same solution that I used in my wheel cleaning bucket, and I'll also be using it to hand wash the vehicle. The great thing about this type of car soap is that it's completely safe on all car surfaces, yet still has an increased ability to remove any existing waxes or sealants, as well as any more stubborn grime compared to a standard maintenance car wash. Now in some cases, if the car has a fresh wax or sealant on it, it won't completely strip it off. But in many cases, if the existing paint protection is a little older or less durable, it definitely can remove it. And this decontamination pre-soak foam is all about starting that wash and stripping process in a gentle but effective way 
as the foam is left on to start softening and breaking it all down. After a thorough pressure rinse down, which is all about slowly running the pressurised water beam over every inch of the car to remove as much of the foreign matter as possible, the next step was the hand wash stage. For this job I decided to give the car another blanket of snow foam and then using the same NV Snow Plus detergent in a spray bottle at a 1 to 10 dilution ratio, I directly sprayed and primed it over my wash mitt before giving the entire car a top to bottom physical hand wash. And in between sections I used my pressure washer to blast the wash mitt clean and then reprimed it with the car wash detergent. Based on what I observed after rinsing off the application of snow foam, I could only see some mold signs of any existing paint protection and very little stubborn or embedded grime. So by reapplying the snow foam and using a stronger concentration of the NV Snow Plus in my spray bottle, it looked as though I could potentially remove all the remaining paint protection and any more slightly tougher grime without having to clay the vehicle or use any stronger chemicals. I get asked all the time why I use a particular method or product for one car compared to another and part of that reason is that I'm always testing and retesting methods, techniques and products. But the other main reason is that every car and job is different. If some of you guys saw the video I did on the Nissan Skyline R32, that car was just the complete opposite to this one, at least from a decontamination perspective as it was just so bad. So what I'm trying to explain is that I'm never just ticking off a list and going through the motions, but rather always adapting to the specific situation. And what works well on one car may be pointless or a waste of time if the situation, goal and condition of the vehicle is different.
After another pressure rinse down, it was on to brushing the exterior trims. Even if the car isn't overly dirty, if my main goal is to strip it clean and bare, you will find that in between those tight and hard to reach trim panels and gaps, there will be some trap dirt that needs a little agitation to dislodge it. Now in the situations where I can clearly see some baked on grime around those trims, I'll tend to use a degreaser or even a tar remover to clean them. But in this case, where it's just some very minimal dirt, I used the same 1-10 to 10 dilution of my car wash detergent, which was more than enough to do the trick. I'll also add that from a car maintenance perspective, it's a great idea to do this a couple of times a year to prevent that looser dirt from becoming embedded grime, as once it starts to build up, it also starts to retain moisture and even prevent water from properly draining in those areas, which can lead to rust around those trims and panel edges. After yet another pressure rinse down, I could see quite a poor and stagnant water shedding behaviour, meaning that the paint was definitely free of any waxes or sealants. But after filling the paint, I could also feel some minimal environmental fallout, mostly on the surface of the top flat panels, as well as the rear bumper near the exhaust. While around most of the lower panels, it seems as though my process was able to remove any road grime. So my next step was using an iron removal chemical to further strip those metal particles. I've mentioned this quite a few times now in past videos, but if you really want to get the most out of an iron or even tar remover, you really have to work them over the paint with a microfiber cloth after spraying them on. And what you'll find is that if the paint isn't overly contaminated with environmental fallout, in many cases you won't even need to clay it. But if you just spray them on, let them dwell and rinse them off, it's quite rare that they'll entirely remove those particles, even if it's just a minimal amount. So after rinsing each panel after this process, the paint was completely smooth with no signs of fallout remaining, meaning that there was absolutely no need or benefit in claying it. The only thing that claying the paint at this stage would do is waste time, money and needlessly further mar the finish of the paint. So yet again, it's all about inspecting, assessing and making good judgments about what is needed and what isn't. The car was then given a final rinse down and completely dried, also blowing out all of the trap water to get it ready for the next paint correction stage.
The last stage of the decontamination process or the first stage of the pain correction process is always an IPA or cleaning alcohol based wipe down. There's always going to be some remaining detergent or chemical residue after a decontamination process. And the benefit of an IPA wipe is that it will remove it without leaving any residue of its own behind that will interfere with the correction process. I'll also add that there are stronger panel wipe products out there that I used to use in the past. But what I personally found is that they seem to make the paint even more sensitive and harder to work with, especially on softer paints which are already quite difficult to finish well on. So it may be something to think about if you do use stronger solvent based panel wipes during the paint correction process or even prior to ceramic coating the paint as they can in my experience also make the paint more scratch prone when applying a coating. Next was having a really good look and assisting the paint with some proper defect spotting lights. Now from a distance and in low lighting the paint actually looks quite good. But as soon as some direct sunlight or some decent indoor lighting hits it, it's a very different story. Now the main defect, which is usually the case with most cars, is a strong uniform layer of spiderweb like swirls. But beyond that, although it's hard to see at this stage, there's also some definite deeper random isolated scratches hiding beneath, which will come to light after the lighter swirls are removed. I can also see that someone has definitely given the paint a rotary polish in the past with buffer holograms left in the finish in most areas. And although it's not too bad considering that the paint is most likely a single stage red, there's also some slight oxidation and haze in the finish. Beyond that, there's a bit of older wax or compound residue in certain areas and a couple of little rock chips with about half a dozen or so areas of touch up paint. And what also looks to be like some very slight burn marks in a couple of areas, though they really aren't all that bad. So onto some paint thickness measuring. Now based on the age of the car as well as some pretty good indications that it is an original paint, it's really going to be a single stage red. The good news about that is that my readings are going to be based on workable paint apart from a thin layer of primer as opposed to trying to estimate what percentage of these paint thickness readings are clear coat as there's none. The bad thing about that is that in my experience, older single stage Porsche paint tends to be extremely soft and sensitive paint which can be extremely difficult to finish well on. But all in all, the good news is that the paint seems to have a fairly healthy amount apart from a couple of select areas that I'm going to be a little more cautious around. 
In addition, relative to its age, it also seems very consistent and original as a whole. Now the only significant jump I had in the measurements was on the bonnet, which is a good 100 or so microns thicker than the rest of the vehicle. Now you could assume that the bonnet's been repainted based on those readings alone, but based on further inspecting the colour and orange pill match, as well as the characteristic of the paint in relation to polishing it, it was actually identical to the rest of the car's paint. So my guess is that Porsche just laid down a little more paint on the bonnet when it was originally painted, which I've actually seen on a few other rare or exotic cars, especially on the top flat panels. So as I begin masking and protecting this car's trims for paint correction, I'll talk a little about my thought process in proceeding. Firstly, apart from definitely needing some paint correction, this 944 Carrera GT is in amazing condition. The interior looks factory new, the black exterior trims are in unbelievably good condition, and the body is rock solid straight with extremely low kilometres on the clock, and what looks to be an entirely factory original car. So if I do my job right and get this paint looking its best, it could very well be the best example of this rare car in existence. Now for you guys that have been watching my channel for a while, you'll know by now that it doesn't matter what car I'm detailing, as I always give it the respect and care it deserves. But if I'm going to be completely honest, there's always an added pressure when you're dealing with a car such as this that is truly irreplaceable as a car is only original once, and this car has made it almost 40 years fully intact as Porsche made it. I know that these days it seems pretty commonplace to see a detailer detailing cars with hundreds of thousands or even millions, but if you try and put yourself in their shoes, it can be a very stressful experience being given that trust. And it doesn't mean that we care more about these cars than others, but it does mean that there's a voice in the back of your head that says don't F this one up. With the paint well prepared, inspected and ready for correction, we'll get to doing some test sections on the paint in part 2 of this series, which I hope you guys stay tuned for. As always, I really hope you guys enjoyed and found this video useful. Please share this video, like, comment and subscribe to this channel to show your support for this content and I'll see you guys soon.